I think wrong motives may not produce much at all. I think God yeah. really knows our motives. And so we really want to make sure that we're checking our heart and making sure that we're pure mm. in, in our motives. Hi, I'm Kirk Cameron, and thanks for joining us for a special YouTube exclusive with Hobby Lobby CEO, David Green. What started out as a small picture frame making business in his garage in 1972 has now grown into a nationwide brand of over 980 stores. Wow, David, thanks so much for joining us uh, for this special takeaways exclusive. Glad to be here. David, you talk about stewardship. You have a, a, an astounding principle that you follow of being so generous to the point of giving 50% of the profits away uh, for good works and other ministry and charity organizations. Uh, that, that's incredible. Talk to us a little bit about why that is so important. You know, I think it comes from the, God's word that tells us that he owns everything. And so we had to get to that. You know, a lot of us Christian people will say God owns it all, but then what does it look like? We really had to come down and say, what does it really look like if God owns it? And so we've really tried to find that paradigm change in our life to where he does own it. And what we have is not a family business, but we have a ministry that God has given us. And so we see it strictly, our business strictly as a ministry to do things that would God would have us to do. And you've talked about how when you give it all away, it ends up coming back to you uh, again, and, and maybe even more so. Right. I could see how some people might try to view that as sort of like a little magic trick. If I really want to make money, I ought to give some away because David Green says that God will give me back even more. And they probably won't get anything because they have the wrong motive. I don't know that God mm. blesses those kind of motives that are motives of greed. And sometimes we hear that. Uh, from some ministers, you, you question what they're trying to do. Are they going after your greed? But your idea to give is to give more. You want to give more. And so uh, that's, that's the whole idea, hopefully, that we do the giving because God will bless us so we can even do more for Him. So what are some practical strategies that I could put into practice or someone watching us right now to build more generosity into the way we see our money? I think our money, our time, or anything is one and the same. Mm. It's what do we have, and why don't we just give it to God and, th and think more about things that are eternal and not temporal because so many things in this life is just temporal and doesn't make a lot of difference for the future. So I think as we see whatever God has given us, sometimes He's given us time, He gives us money, He gives us talent, He gives each one of us something different. And whatever it is we have, we need to give it back to Him. And, and then that's when I think God will bless what we're doing. Mm. Whether we like it or not, uh, money can influence our decisions. Uh, you know, if I make this decision, I'm going to make more money. Uh, and I can justify that in so many different ways. Sometimes people can cloud our judgment because they're important to us. And, uh, or maybe I think they're irreplaceable. And so I need to do what they say so that we don't lose. How do we protect and guard ourselves against greed when things are going well? Well, the one scripture in the Bible talks about to us to be uh, content. So we have to ask ourselves, am, am I content? And if I'm, if I'm not, then I, I've got a, a spiritual problem. And I think I learned that from my mother. She had very little, but she was always content in her life. And that's what I want to do. I want to be content. Most of us have more stuff than we need. And more stuff is not going to make us happier. So those are the things hopefully we learn that we're just content with what God has given us. I think some people hear your story and they're so inspired. Wow, you were making picture frames in your garage with your wife and here it's become the Hobby Lobby uh, universe that we see all over the place. Maybe my little idea could become something like that. Or maybe some people are discouraged thinking, how will this ever work? Does God even see me? How is my tiny little, little mission going to turn into something successful? How do you... How do you encourage people to trust God with small beginnings? You know, sometimes my mother had a small beginning, but she was content in that. She always loved people. She brought people to know Christ. But I think she fulfilled her what God had for her for her life. Not everybody's going to be a CEO of a Hobby Lobby, but I think our content and our happiness comes from fulfilling what God has for us wherever we are. My wife always says to our kids, uh, God multiplies the things that he loves. And uh, I, I, think, I think God loves Hobby Lobby. 
And I think that he, or maybe the better way to say it is he loves what you're doing and the way that you're honoring him and taking care of other people, mm -hmm. which is why the, the life and the growth seems to be multiplied at Hobby Lobby. Yeah, it seems like we have a much better chance when God is blessing us. And I think he blesses us when we're trying to walk with him and do the things the way he would have us to do, even though we mess up more than we would like, that we do try to do what he, in his will and, and do it according to his mm. Bible and the, God's word. So, You know, that reminds me a lot of, of marriage. And, uh, you know, sometimes we do things in order to get something from our spouse uh, rather than doing it simply to serve our spouse yeah. because they are precious to us. Right. And here I see you applying that principle to business. We, we give money away, we take care of and, and practice principles that invest in people, not so that we'll improve the bottom line, but because we truly care about people and we truly honor God yeah. and we leave the rest up to Him. Right. That's the right motive and that seems to produce the blessing. I think wrong motives may not produce much at all. I think God yeah. really knows our motives and so we really wanna make sure that we're checking our heart and making sure that we're pure mm. in, in our motives. And I see also there are some people and companies who do make a lot of money and we say, well, why are they being blessed when they don't even love God and they don't care about people? Well, sometimes that money and that success can be the very downfall of those peoples and company because they don't have what you talked about and that is a guard against greed and pride. And, um, you know, all, all of that stuff comes before a fall. Yeah, and I don't know what kind of, if they don't have a relationship with their creator, I just don't know what kind of lives they're living. I don't know that I want to be in any of them's shoes, no matter how much money they have. Yeah, yeah. Da David, can you give us uh, an example of what implementing some of these principles looks like in the halls of Hobby Lobby? Yeah, for me as a CEO, I have a lot of officers and I've delegated and they do their job and I don't need to do a lot what, they, what they're doing. And so it's really exciting to me to get into the weeds and that's what I do so often in different categories. And most recently I spent over a week just working with ribbon, how many different sizes there are, how many kind of makes are there and mm. how many different colors are. There's literally thousands and thousands and someone has to come together along with a great buyer and put together the exact perfect as, as best possible uh, selection for the customer. And that takes a tremendous amount of thought and labor and work, but I love to get into the weeds and do something like this. So I work six days a week, including Saturdays, because I love to do this. I tell my wife on Saturdays, hey, if you ever get bored, feel like a, you're a widow, call me, I'll come home. I don't have to be here, but I really, really have fun getting in the weeds and down into the, to, to the very, I don't care whether it's scissors. I might spend a whole week just working on scissors because six different departments <laughs> have scissors. This buyer's doing this, this buyer's doing that. But how, how do we know we're doing it right and have the right scissors and buying them from the right places? So I thank God that I have the time, even as CEO, to get into the weeds on a lot of different categories. And it's really a lot of fun. Boy, well, thank you. Thank you for sharing all this wisdom with us. This has been fantastic. Well, thank you for watching. Please share this with a friend and be sure to like and subscribe so that you never miss a video. God bless you.